Good morning, friends in Christ, and we are thankful that you're joining us on this Thursday morning as we continue with our Facebook Live devotions. And for our devotions this morning, we continue going through the Gospel of Matthew, and we find ourselves in Matthew chapter 21. So go ahead and open up your Bibles today to Matthew chapter 21 as we continue to go verse by verse through the Gospel of Matthew. And in Matthew 21, we remember the context uh, where we are at is that Jesus is in his final week as he's making his way to the cross. And he's already cleared the temple, and then he is uh, doing some teaching. And in the midst of that teaching, there's some hostility and some tension as it continues to build between Jesus and the religious leaders as we know that just in a few days they're going to arrest him and have him crucified on a cross. And so that is the context in Matthew chapter 21. And we're going to be looking at verses 28 to 32 today. After you turn there, Matthew 21, 28 to 32, go ahead and hit the share button. And we're going to see Jesus is going to use today a literary device to teach a lesson. And that literary device is a parable. And so a story that's not true, but could be true in a person's life that a person can understand and relate to, even though it's not true, they find themselves in the story and he asks them a question. And so we want to find ourselves in the story today too, and let it relate to us and how we would respond. And then what is Jesus teaching us through this parable of the two sons and for uh, a person who's maybe a, have been a parent or at work with employees or a manager, there are times that uh, you have a conversation with an individual. And sometimes you think it went well when you first have that conversation, but you find out later it really didn't. But uh, to your face, it seemed like it went well and that there was a good understanding, but you find out later it didn't go well at all uh, by uh, what they said after that meeting. And for some, you have a meeting that can be difficult and it looked like it went difficult and tough, but uh, it went better than you thought of how the person responded after. And that's what we're going to see today. This difficult conversation between a father and these two sons and how each one responds differently. And so Matthew 21, before we look at verse 28, Remember verse 27, and there, so they answered Jesus, we don't know, no. and he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. So in verse 27, Jesus' authority is being questioned by the religious leaders, and that is why he tells this parable. This parable comes in that context of the religious leaders questioning Jesus' authority. And as they question his authority, that's why he uses this parable. So we turn to Matthew 21, looking at verse 28. What do you think? Jesus says, a man had two sons and he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. And so the conversation between the father and the son is the father says, you have chores to do today. I need you to go out for the family and to work in the vineyard. And the son says, no, I don't want to work today. I don't want to do the chores. But after that response to the father, he has some time to think about it. He changes his mind. And even though he said no to dad's face and to dad's authority, which is not a biblical thing to do. We remember the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. Even though he said no and was disrespectful at first, he had a change of heart. And later that day, he went out and worked in the vineyard. And so the dad thought that at first the conversation didn't go well. My son disrespected me. He said no to the chores. But then dad would find out later that he had a change of heart and he went out and he did what dad asked him to do. And so that is the conversation with the first son. The first son says no at first, but it really was a yes. He went out and did the work. Now we see the exchange with the second son, verse 30. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. And then Jesus responds to them. 
So in the second conversation, the father goes to the second son and says, I got work for you today out in the vineyard. And this son says, yes, I'll go work for you today, dad. And dad thought the conversation went great. But dad would come to find out later, even though he said yes to his face, he really said no, and he didn't go do the work. And so Jesus says, which one is better? The one who first says no to your face, but then really does say yes and goes and does the work? Or the one who says yes to your face and then really behind your back says no? Which way is it? No yes or yes no? Which one is better? And Jesus is setting them up in a trap. He has them right where they want them. They think that their answer is going to be correct, but the true answer is a lose-lose for them because the real answer is to say yes to your father when he asks you to do the work and then yes to go out and actually do it. The best answer is yes, yes, not no, yes, or yes, no. And that's what Jesus gets into today. He has them set up. The first they said, Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John, the baptizer, came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. And so Jesus is saying to religious leaders, you messed up. You first said no to John the Baptist, and now you're saying no to me. And I asked you a trick question. It isn't yes, then no or no, then yes, the best answer was that of the tax collectors, the prostitutes, and the sinners. They said yes to John the Baptist when he came preaching in the wilderness this way of repentance, to turn away from your sinful life and to come and to follow the kingdom of God. And now those same tax collectors and prostitutes who said yes to John the Baptist are the ones saying yes to me, Jesus the Messiah, the Savior of all. And so Jesus tricked the religious leaders here with his authority, with his wisdom, and with his discernment. And he's saying to them, you got it wrong. The right answer is that when your father asks you to do something, to say yes, and then to say yes and actually go and do the work. That there really is a respect for your father and saying yes, and then that faith is put into action by showing that obedience and then making that yes, 100% yes, by going out and doing the work of the Lord. And that is what Jesus is saying to religious leaders. It is time. It is time for you to have a change of heart, to realize your need for the forgiveness of your sins and to turn to me. But instead you said no to John, now you're saying no to me and you're wanting to have me crucified. And so Jesus shows that he has the ultimate authority and the ultimate wisdom as today in this teaching that he was leading them right where they didn't want to go, right into this trap for the religious leaders who do not understand Jesus and they don't understand the kingdom of God and the gospel. But the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the sinners, they realize the gospel. They realize their need for forgiveness of their sins. And that's why they say yes to John and that's why they say yes to Jesus. And that's why we, as followers of Jesus, have said yes to Jesus, because we realize that we are all sinners in need of forgiveness and grace. And we all need that gift that we can't do for ourselves, a gift that we don't earn or deserve, but that gift of grace that Jesus did for us, what we can't do for ourselves. He lives a perfect life, and he takes our place on the cross. And what is our response? Lord Jesus, have mercy on me a sinner. We realize that we are sinful people in need of God's grace, and that's why we say yes to Jesus, because he first said yes to us by coming down from heaven, going to a cross. And as we say yes to that forgiveness and grace, we then say yes to being obedient and going out today and doing the work in the kingdom of God. And so may our yeses to the Lord and to his work and to his kingdom be 100% all in yes today and for the rest of our lives. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the word that we get to spend time in today, the word that challenges us, but also encourages us. It builds us up, 
but it also always points us to Jesus, our Savior, and our need for His forgiveness and His grace, and that He gives us mission, purpose, and that we are His children, and that He gives us that unconditional love that He showed us on the cross, that He changes our life from the inside out now and for all of eternity. We say yes to you, Lord, today as our Lord and our Savior, and we also say yes to the kingdom work that you have in store for us as we go out to be your hands and feet and to follow you. Lord, have your way in us as you continue to do your work in us. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed day today as you say yes to the Lord and yes to the kingdom work that he has in front of you this day as we follow him to the cross. Amen.